Sumner, Tara Doyle Anna King, the President and CEO of the Puyallup Sumner Chamber of Commerce. I am excited to be here today. You know, our city is fantastic. Our city is very supportive of our police department. And I scratch my head when I think about how and why we have not been able to successfully pass a bond measure that would help support a new public safety building in jail. And so today we have with us uh, former Mayor Kathy Turner, serving from 94 to 2012, um, here in the capacity of a passionate Puyallup resident who's just trying to do the right thing and has um, serving on a committee, the Puyallup Neighbors for Public Safety Committee. And we also have council member Jim Castema with his hat on today serving as the committee chair of the Puyallup Neighbors for Public Safety Building. So we're gonna unpack a little bit about the timeline of what where we've been trying to get um, this initiative move forward and where we're at today and why this time it's going to be different. And there's a lot of important data. So thanks for tuning in today. Um, this is a great topic. So. Kathy Turner, thank you so much for being here. Council Member Castama. You're welcome. An important topic. I'm so happy that the Chamber can be here to kind of, I guess, mitigate this conversation today and, and, and really learn a little bit about um, the timeline and where we've been and where we're going with this. Um, so Council Members Castama, you have been um, knocking on hundreds of doors, uh, speaking to the public. Where would you say, um, you know some of our questions are what i guess let's 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 take us back to 2021 what happened what did the bill look like when it was on the uh, measure at that point on the ballot till today what are, what are we looking and how are we looking different well that was 2021 okay. we went the council went to the ballot and asked people to approve an 82 million dollar bond measure uh, the city already owns the property, one of the properties up on the South Hill near Lowe's Furniture or Lowe's uh, Hardware Store. Mm -hmm. So we, the council spent probably, I would say, in all almost 10 years examining all of these various options with about 46, I think we counted, public meetings where city council meetings where we've had consultants examine this issue. And we finally settled on $82 million after reducing a lot of the various costs mm -hmm. associated with it and trying to be as efficient as we could. We put that on the ballot. And again, in 2021, we lost by about 50 votes. You have to hit a 60% okay. vote to pass a bond. It's not just a simple majority. So we again put that back on the ballot the following February, and it again failed. But the need for a new police station is constant. It's something we, it's unavoidable. Mm -hmm. And so what we did this time is we decided we would not put in the courts at this time because we have a five year uh, lease left on the courts. And we put down a really a more efficient cut the square footage by over 8,000 square feet. We put the jail and the police administration building into a proposal and we have a downtown station right at the base of City Hall. And, um, well, there goes our sign. <laughs> uh, that was a sign for Protect Pew All. It you is. It is. I'm sure Hannah will pop it up for okay, us here good. in a minute. So what we did, though, is we combined financing with $20 million councilmatic bonds where the council issues those bonds, and we asked the voters to pay $56 million. So it is a 30% reduction mm -hmm. from what we've seen before. And um, I, I, I'm very proud of the fact that you have Council Member King, Palmer, Whitting, the Mayor, Dean Johnson, um, Robin Ferris, and Julie Dore, mm -hmm. all supporting this. Yes. I mean, that is pretty rare that you would have all the members of the City Council with just unanimously say, we absolutely need this for law enforcement. And so we put it back on the ballot and we formed a citizens group to raise money to get out there, knock on doors, and mm -hmm. advocate for this thing. So that's where we're at. I love it. Well, let's talk about these conditions. Kathy Turner, have you had an opportunity? Well, I've had many opportunities <laughs> to be in the uh, current public safety building, and we have to remember that it was built in 1968 mm -hmm. when our population was about 14,000 people, and now we're 45,000 and growing. Um, Closets are used for offices. Mm. Uh, showers are used for storage. The sewer backs up. The roof leaks. 
technology is close to non-existence and really there are no amenities for our female officers, which is really important to me. If you have any hesitation on voting for this uh, bond, I really suggest that you tour the building. Mm -hmm. And to follow up on some of Jim's comments, it's so important to know that there will be a station downtown. Uh, which were some of the concerns people had, we believe, when we talked to them after they vote, they failed twice. Um, and the jail has been reduced in size from 84 to 58 beds. Mm -hmm. As Jim mentioned, the square footage has been reduced by 8,500 square feet. Uh, and the bond issue itself decreased by 30%. And as Jim said about councilmatic debt, to me it's real important that people understand what that is. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between your and my budget mm -hmm. and their budget. Right. So it comes out of their budget, not out of our pocket. So that 20 million is really important as the city hall was built with councilmatic debt. Mm -hmm. So this is to me the most important decision that voters have to make in the city of Puyallup at this time. Can we talk a little bit about what some of the misnomers might be? Because again, I just, I see the support. I feel that we all agree that this needs to happen, but again, failing with such a short measure, um, what were some of the reasons behind maybe our lack of success previously? Well, one of the things that I hear consistently is, do we really need a jail in mm -hmm. Puyallup? Can <laughs> we just use jails from other areas? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the first, the response, and we've studied this extensively. Like I say, we've had well over 40 different council meetings where we've gone all through these items in detail. Number one, it will cost significantly more. Up to 25% of the just the base rate of putting a person in another facility. And that doesn't account enhancements for the need for medical care, mm -hmm. things of that sort. Um, second of all, it will take police time to transport a someone suspected of committing a crime here or who's committed a crime, to actually transport them to a facility that's long away. Mm -hmm. And the three facilities we're really looking at are Pierce County, and there's also one in the Nisqually area, and there's one in the SeaTac area. And we're mm -hmm. talking about, uh, for booking and for transportation, up to three hours of an officer's time right. away from the streets in Puyallup. Think about that. Mm -hmm. That officer can be here in Puyallup, solving crimes, preventing crimes, mm -hmm. or they can be stuck on I-5 in the freeway or be on River Road on their way to Pierce County. And a third reason why, you know, the jail, have, depending on uh, relying on other people, is really not in Pulp's best interest is that many of them won't receive misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and Kathy, um, you know, I think can go over misdemeanors, but I want to let people know what, what misdemeanors are. Domestic violence. DUIs, theft, arson, smash and grabs, mm -hmm. uh, robberies, damaged property, drug possession. Can you imagine a community where people can do that mm -hmm. and you just catch and release them immediately right, right back on the street? Mm -hmm. We have always taken great pride in Puyallup that every single neighborhood is safe. Mm -hmm. Other communities, they'll say, well, particular areas are no longer safe sure. for families, for children, etc. And we have said absolutely not. Mm -hmm. We're not going down that path. And one way is that we can ensure that misdemeanors actually go into jail. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, you know, I, I think those reasons are why we decided we absolutely need our own jail to determine how to keep our own streets safe. I think it's really important to, as Jim had said, uh, Pierce County does not take misdemeanors mm -hmm. and the no side that is quite active out in the community keeps saying we should use Pierce County Jail. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't make sense. First of all, if we look at the crimes downtown, most of them are misdemeanors. In fact, I believe it's about 80%. Mm -hmm. You're talking about vandalism, you're talking about theft, as Jim said, DUI. Uh, domestic violence, which I find hard to believe is a, is a uh, misdemeanor, <laughs> but um, it's so important. Mm -hmm. we, we boast about public safety in Puyallup. However, two weeks ago we had 45 arrests um, for misdemeanors and uh, within four days, mm -hmm. and they were all put into our jail. I really believe that our police chief says it best. He is so committed to lowering crime in our city 
Um, but we have to give them the tools to do that. Right. And as Scott says, or pardon me, Chief, Chief Engel says, mm -hmm. crime is up in our city. Mm -hmm. Releasing criminals at the scene of the crime mm -hmm. is what will happen mm -hmm. if we don't have a jail. I just don't think that is what the city of Puyallup Residence residents want. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not what our businesses want. And um, we're proud of our community, and mm -hmm. we're proud of our police department, and it's time to support this bond. You know, another point that people bring up, they ask me the question, they say, well, how many of the people in our jail are actually people who've committed crimes in, in Puyallup? Mm -hmm. uh, there are some concerns that it would become somewhat of a regional jail. Other people would rely, other cities would rely on it. Right. And so what we did is we went back four years and we studied all of the individuals who've been in our jail during that time, 92% of the time, <coughs> people committed crimes yeah. in Puyallup. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the reason why that other 8% is, is really not bad is because it just shows how efficient we are. Mm -hmm. If we have space available, okay, then we'll go ahead and we'll charge other jurisdictions right. mm -hmm. to put them in our jail to offset the cost that the taxpayer here right. has. But people in Puyallup have to understand that when a person comes from Puyallup, has committed a crime, they take precedent mm -hmm. over anyone else. And those other people, they have to leave. Right. Because the primary primary uh, mission is to protect the people of Puyallup. Yep. I think also, um, when you were mentioning uh, about the station downtown, which I think is so very important, but also people in the city have a real concern about mental health issues. Right. And I'm happy to say that in this new proposal, the jail beds have been reduced, but 58 of those beds do include mental health services mm -hmm. and drug, uh, drug addiction services. Great. And I think that's such an important asset component. to our city. It is a critical Let's look at the, um, the nose, if you will, um, sure. and it seems to me that um, data has shown that it is predominantly the downtown residents that may be more likely to vote no, and it seems like, again, one of the misunderstandings might have to do with how people believe the police departments run. Mm -hmm. um, you watch TV, and on TV, they're all at the police department waiting for the call, and everybody's hanging out at the jail or the, the police building, and that's just not fact that's not how you know we work here um, I, I'm gonna use the wrong terminology Chief Engel will probably be upset with me for the wrong te terminology but I know that they're operating in zones they're assigned zones and they stay and operate out of their car floating those areas um, not waiting for a call in downtown so as I understand it the downtown folks are like I like my public safety here this is where all the police are but well, really they're not uh, <laughs> I can tell you that the staffing levels will remain exactly the same yeah throughout the city and you're absolutely correct they're in certain districts and they will remain exactly the same so that's not going to change in fact <clears throat> I think the visibility of the police will be enhanced mm -hmm. we're taking in Pioneer Park Main Park and center of town, that ground floor of the city hall, that center station, we're going to run our traffic unit out of that. So you'll have motorcycles that will be parked there. Mm -hmm. You'll have clear distinction, Pure Police Station. So when people come to our park, mm -hmm. downtown park, they'll know it's a safe place. It'll be, it'll enhance the visibility. Some people, in fact, I've talked to, they don't know that the police station is even where it currently is. Right. Because it tends to be a little bit more remote, off the side. Uh, we're putting it front and center. Mm -hmm. So people will be able to see that. But the actual administration, evidence, et cetera, that will be taking place up on the South Hill. But, but in no way are we going to uh, lighten up on any protection in the valley. And, and I can say personally, uh, I've lived in the same house now for well, roughly 63 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I had bought the home that I grew up in from mm -hmm. my parents. So I don't really live that far from here. Near Veterans Park is where I live. And I am very concerned about that we have uh, police protection that's readily available. And I feel very confident mm -hmm. uh, in the staffing levels remaining the same, that the protection we need in my neighborhood will remain. Yeah, But it's also important to say, as we say, they work out of their cars. Remember, that is their daily job where they're looking for uh, 
right? Alert. Alert. They're alert. <laughs> they're, they're taking care of the issues that are called into them. But then there's the follow-up. So they don't do that in their car. Right. So right. The, the facility is still a necessity to have to where they stare, store the evidence, mm-hmm. where they write the paperwork, right. where they send it in, where they make the administration for courts, of it all. Mm-hmm. All of those things. And so that time in the police department is not sitting around and waiting for a call. Mm-hmm. It's doing the work to get to the next step, to yep. get that offender uh, to court, right? Uh, which is very important because if that doesn't happen, mm-hmm. the offender is just right back out on the street again. So that mm-hmm. is important. And the other reason, too, I think District 1 people, um, and I, like Jim, live downtown. Mm-hmm. I live right next to Pioneer Park. So um, I love the idea that our police station is downtown, but I know where they come from right. in their cars. But I also understand that being in the Lahar zone, we cannot rebuild That's a station right. downtown with a jail. We'd lose federal funding. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we can't do that. It's mm-hmm. not allowed anymore. So things have changed since 1968. Good, good and, point. And, and we must change with them. You know, I bet you a lot of the no's too are going to be anyone who opposes of any tax increase, right? Um, Kathy, I think you have some good data on where the tax dollars are going. Well, I think honestly, a lot of people in the city of Puyallup and, and probably in other jurisdictions either don't understand our tax structure. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to ask everybody who is considering not voting for this to not just look at your tax statement that comes in the mail because it's not detailed Mm -hmm. to actually go online and I happen to have one here that I'm going to leave with the chamber Um, and this is for a house that is valued at Mm $499,000 I couldn't get one right at 500 (laughs) and it's important to know what that breakdown is so at a $500,000 house the taxes are about Mm -hmm. Uh, $4,608 1.7% of that goes to transit 11% 11% goes to the city. Conservation futures is 0.3%. County tax is 8%. Flood is 1. Fire is 14 plus 20 plus the 217 mm-hmm. um, be- benefit charge. Port is 1.5. Schools are 36%. Mm-hmm. And state of Washington is 26%. Mm-hmm. Do you see anything missing in that? Yeah. Where's our police? <laughs> police are in the 11%. Mm-hmm. So it is, it's, everything is in the 11%. Mm-hmm. The parks, water, sewer, uh, street maintenance, street maintenance yeah. library, city hall, all of our employees, including police. Mm-hmm. So we are so good in Puyallup. We have supported our fire. We have supported our schools. Mm-hmm. We supported the library. It's really, and the library is now paid off. Yeah. And um, so it is really time to spend $15 a month and support our police. Let's and let's I, echo that again, $15 <laughs> a month. Well, and I, I think also what's important it to, to look at is if you don't invest the money. Mm-hmm. Um, there are communities that don't have the kind of police support we do. We pay an outside firm to come in and do surveys in Puyallup. And we do that because we want to make sure they're objective and that people, when they look at them, they'll say that it was, you know, again, an objective survey and it's worth the data that you get from it. The approval rating for our police in Puyallup is well over 80%, it's 82%, Mm -hmm. which, you know, given a lot of the things that have gone on in the country, et cetera, Mm -hmm. is very, very high. People in Puyallup really uh, prioritize their police. Now, in other communities where maybe that isn't the case, I, I think you have to go there and look at the quality of life. Mm-hmm. You have to look at, like I mentioned, is it safe in all the streets throughout mm-hmm. the community? Is that the commitment that they've made like we have made? Right. Mm-hmm. And then you think about not making that $15 commitment to give the police the tools that they need. Mm-hmm. And it would, it would severely impact, in my opinion, quality of life, mm-hmm. property values, if we did not have the level of pre- police protection that we do in Puyallup, it's something we're very proud of. So I think it's a very, if you want to call it an investment, you may, you could probably do that. Mm-hmm. That it's an investment to keep the values, the safety, quality of life here in Puyallup high. Great. Well, I think we have to go back to it is $15 a month, and I know that people are concerned about taxes, and that does sound like a a large number, but again, 
42.6% of that is voter approved. Mm -hmm. None of that voter approved is for the city of Pelham. Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. And can um, I can I highlight that only 11% of your property taxes <laughs> right. go to Pulp. I know we, we kind of talked about that, but I just want to emphasize that. So because, you know, when I go door to door and they look at the property tax, and I too. Um, and it's $506 is 11%. Yes. Mm -hmm. I of, the fourth, yeah, of, of the fourth, yeah, of the 4,000. Yeah. You, well, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Because, you know, people look at me and they'll, and, and I am responsible, wholly responsible for that approximately 511%. And we are doing our best to be as frugal as we can in Puyallup with mm -hmm. that and provide the services for 18 parks, mm -hmm. that we have 18 parks, mm -hmm. the street services, the police protection, library, all of these services that we provide, the festivals, et cetera. Um, that's really, I think, pretty, pretty efficient use of, of the dollars. I would agree. And so I... Um, but thank you, Kathy, for bringing up that. That's that's actually a fabulous way to explain it by breaking out percentage-wise. So there's a, a vision for this new public safety building. And currently, so you own the property on 39th, the city does. Correct. Um, the total project to build is 76 million, 20 million councilmatic funds, 56 million going to Proposition 1, vote yes, on the ballot in November. Yes. Um, what is the long-term vision for the site? Well, long -term, immediate and long term, I guess. Well, immediate would be that we build, in fact, the jail and the administrative building. Yeah. Administration building. Um, but I think in the long term, we currently have our courts downtown. We are leasing the courts. Mm -hmm. The courts will need an expansion someday. We've been existing with one courtroom, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you know, our city now is, you know, we're. We're over 43,000, probably close to 44,000 mm -hmm. in population. Boy, that's a difference from when I grew up here. We were had farm fields there everywhere, but, but those are the changes. Mm -hmm. And with that is a realization that we will have to expand the courts. Mm -hmm. Now, that may come five, ten years down the line. We will face that issue, uh, the current council or at another council at mm -hmm. another point. But what we decided to do is put on the ballot the absolute essential. Mm -hmm. This, this, you know, I invite anyone to call the police chief, the city, and he will give you a tour. Oh yes, of that building. Yes, I mean, and he will do it. You know, no strong arming. He'll just let you see the facility. Yes, when you do see roof having structural issues, the foundation having structural issues, people using closets for offices. Um, one officer told me that the plumbing didn't work the yep. day that they were there. Um, when you see that, you're going to say, by golly, yeah. we need a new facility. Yeah. Um, I think the courts, again, not quite as immediate, but it's around the corner. Okay. So those are the plans. We've built this facility, and it is designed as such that we can add court later Great. on another day. And I think also, as we talk about recruitment, mm -hmm. recruitment is mm -hmm. real important in every city right now. You see on the news, every city is trying to hire. Puyallup has done a really good job with getting quality officers to the city, and we are, at, we are right now at the number of officers we need. Um, but when you're competing with other cities... <laughs> well, they're just meeting them at Anthem, not at the public safety building. <laughs> exactly, and they can't use the restroom yeah. at the time during the meeting. Um, it's, it's real important. Our police officers give their all to this community. Yes, they do. They, their lives are in danger or could be in danger daily. And when they come back to do their work, to <clears> file their paperwork, to prepare for court, they deserve to have a decent place to do it in. We outgrew this facility 10 years ago, maybe mm -hmm. 20. Right. Uh, it, it, it's time to move on. And it's unfortunate that the way cities do that is by taxation. Sure. It's our only tool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just, I can't stress enough how important it is to, to pass this bond issue this time yes. or else we are going to go back to what the chief says of releasing criminals at the scene of the crime and that is a very sad comment mm -hmm. for any city yeah. but especially for mine. 
I think you both have brought up great data, great points. Um, any final closing comments that you want to add? Vote. Vote and vote <laughs> yes on Proposition 1. Well, you know, I would only say that, you know, I certainly having grown up here, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, you know, Stewart Elementary School where I went to school, I used to be able to go down there and I used to uh, play basketball on the court there. That's all fenced off now mm -hmm. security-wise because of, you know, intrusions and right. uh, that, that could pose hazards to students. Um, I've seen this community go through a lot of changes mm -hmm. and I have committed to giving as close as we can the quality of life, mm -hmm. of safety that I had growing up here and giving that to future generations. I appreciate Kathy's commitment. She's been committed to this community for, you know, one of the most committed to this community uh, mm -hmm. of, of any individual and I thank her for doing that. I think this is a big component of mm -hmm. it. I really do. I think it, it it lines up with the spirit of Puyallup and that is we're all in this together. Absolutely. Every neighborhood is precious. Every family needs to be given good opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to be in a safe environment. Is there anything I can do to make an ask to our followers regarding the involvement of the Puyallup Neighbors for Public Safety Committee? Um, do you need help? You want signs on well, lawns? Do you need? <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And they would just uh, contact me and I and I'm easy to find, but I'll give you my telephone number. Please do. 253 I live on 8th Avenue. I don't mind giving my address because everybody knows where I live. It's 418 8th Avenue, Northeast Puyallup, right down towards the Veterans Bridge, down from Stewart Elementary School. Again, most people know I, I live there. Contributions would be very helpful okay. because it will help us do mailings. It'll help us with outreach. And... Um, also, also, people like Kathy and myself, plus a cadre of other people, are willing to go to neighbors, uh, neighborhood meetings, and talk about these issues yeah. and advocate for them. So if they would like to do that, contact us. Perfect. Tim, share the dates of the public meetings Oh, great, up. great, great, Kathy. And, you know, while he's looking for those dates, I'll just um, make a final comment. When I first decided to run for council, I met with the city manager, whose mm -hmm. name was Al Sabin at the time, mm -hmm. and he gave me some great advice, but one sentence I've never forgotten. Public safety, health, and welfare. That's a council member's job. Mm -hmm. And here we are yep. talking about public safety mm -hmm. how many years later, sure. and it's really important. Without public safety, health, and welfare, we don't have a healthy this community. And the city of Puyallup needs this more than anything. It's the most important vote you'll make this November. Please vote yes. I Thank agree. you, Kathy. Um, uh, let me go over the dates. These are going to be public meetings that will be in Puyallup before this election where people can go. Um, you, you know, there's no ticket required. You just go ahead and show up. The first one, September the 20th, that's coming right up here. There'll be a community presentation, open house at the pavilion right in the center of Puyallup, mm -hmm. Pioneer Park. But we're going to have um, neighborhood meetings. October 9th at the First Baptist Church from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, October 18th, and by the way, I may be going through these fast, just replay the podcast yep, to, yep. to get them. Uh, October 18th at the Nazarene Church from 6 to 8 p.m. October 19th at Pierce College, and then October 25th at the Elks Lodge, you know, out on Main, Great. Uh, in that direction. So, and but keep in mind, tours are always available. Mm -hmm. So go on to Facebook for the City of Puyallup or the website for the City of Puyallup. And, you know, Scott Engel, Chief Scott Engel, we're very fortunate to have him. Uh, I think as a boy he grew up in Sumner, but he uh, ended up coming to, uh, to Puyallup later on. He lives in Puyallup. Mm -hmm. He's very dedicated to this community, and he will take you on that tour, no strong arming. You get to see firsthand what it's like at the current facility yeah. and make up your own mind. I think that's great. You know, what is different this time is public engagement. Um, you know, the, the city itself has had our board of directors visit the, the jail, and or not the jail, sorry, the public safety building. Um, we've had our wake ups, so we had 75 people from the chamber community come there. Um, you know, all of what they've done to prompt you to have a public safety committee 
I, again, it's not going to fail. I, that's my prediction. <laughs> it's not going to fail. Well, thank you. Um, our thousands of viewers that will be watching this will certainly be paying attention and voting thank you so with much. their conscience and uh, voting yes for Proposition 1. So thank you for this uh, very special engagement today. Council Member Castama, Kathy Turner, such a pleasure to uh, speak with you, collaborate with you on this very important topic. So uh, we'll make sure that Hannah, our director over here, uh, listens, grabs those dates, grabs links to be able to, you know, donate quickly and or join forces to help doorbell uh, so that it's really easy for the viewers to be able to engage that way as well. So thank you again. Uh, always a pleasure. And let's uh, protect Puyallup. Good. Thank you. Thank you.